So I kind of let you hang it last week. A little bit. Yeah. Who was not here last week? <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to catch you up a little bit. Quickly, we'll go over that we learned a few things about Zacchaeus. First of all, we learned that Zacchaeus was a big jerk. Well done, okay? Zacchaeus was short. He was a little jerk. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right? He was a traitor to his people because he's a tax collector, and he worked for the, the occupation. He worked for the occupying government, which made him a traitor to his people. However, it made him a wealthy traitor to his people. So he's a wealthy tax collector who's a traitor to his people, so he has no friends, and he owns one chair. And he's not even sorry, because he only needs one chair. He doesn't have any friends. Okay? And at the moment, he's out on a limb, because he wanted to see Jesus. Quite literally, he is up in a sycamore fig tree, watching Jesus come into town. And we know that Jesus and his whole entourage came to Jericho, over the crest of the hill, and down the path, and into Jericho, and Jericho is very, very crowded. And Jesus has his whole entourage with him. So Zacchaeus couldn't see. He gets knocked down. He sees a tree up ahead, so there's only one thing to do. He climbs the tree. And I left you with Zacchaeus in the tree. He's probably not standing up in the tree like this. He's probably clinging desperately to the trunk of the tree while trying to scooch out onto the branch because he's not 20 anymore. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> and he's not much of a tree climber. So he's up in the tree, and then Jesus comes in. Jesus of Nazareth, with all of his entourage, he walks right under the branch of the tree and looks up and sees Zacchaeus and says, Zacchaeus! Come down. And so, Zacchaeus, he kind of freezes. Because he's realized that everyone in the entire town of Jericho is staring at him. <laughs> and he's up there in a tree in a long dress. <laughs> so, it's weird, right? <laughs> so he tries to come down. He tries to get down out of the tree, and he, and he tries to be cool, right? <laughs> Getting down out of the tree with, with limited success, I might add, <laughs> right? And he gets up, and he looks at Jesus, and Jesus puts his arm around Zacchaeus and says, Zacchaeus, hey, I want to stay at your house tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, okay. Let's see if I can get it straight. I'm not very political. Registered independent. But, but let's put it like this. Let's say that you are a giant Obama fan. Right? You have the pin, and you have the Obama bumper sticker, and you have the t-shirt that says Obama on it in giant letters, and you've got the hat, and you have that annoying sign in your yard. <laughs> and Obama comes to Sierra Vista. And Obama's walking down the street, like Obama does. <laughs> and you come out of your house, and you are like, boing! Those are those cartoon eyes. It's Obama! He's walking down the street. And, and you're like, Obama! It's me! It's me! I'm your biggest fan! Look, I've got the shirt! And Obama walks up to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> and says, Rush, my man, I want to stay at your house tonight. <laughs> Here. <laughs> I'm going home. 
and they all go back inside their houses. So there's nobody left out on the street except for Zacchaeus and Jesus and his entourage. Peter, James, John, Joanna, Susanna, Mary, 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 all the Marys. <laughs> right? And uh, to be a fly on a wall somewhere around there, or, or to somehow be in Zacchaeus' head right now on this walk back to his house. How many of you have ever had a number of people show up for dinner without telling you they're going? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> and one of them is a celebrity. <laughs> so Zacchaeus and the entourage are walking back to Zacchaeus' house. And Zacchaeus is thinking, okay, Jesus of Nazareth is coming to my house. <laughs> and all guys and all women and Marys are coming to my house. I hope I have enough food. I hope I have enough napkins. I hope I have enough... Ah! I hope I have enough chairs! And if you've been paying attention to the story, I'll catch you up a little bit. That's not just a chair, is it? That is Zacchaeus' sin. That's his shame. Right? It's his narcissism. It's his loneliness. It, it's everything. And it's all just there. And it's all just kind of bleh. And Jesus is going to walk in. And he's going to see that mess. And all that ugliness. And he's going to go, Ah! Oh, Zacchaeus! Dude! What are you... How... Oh, man! That is ugly. Right? So... So what happened? Where do we take the story from there? I mean, what happens when Jesus walks into your life? When he comes into your house, right into your house, and he sees your chair? What happens when Jesus walks into your life and he sees your shame, your sin, and all of your selfish little things and that ugliness? He walks in, and he sees your shame, and he picks it up, and he starts beating you with it. Come back here! No. Jesus does not beat us with our sin, and that's a good thing. No. It's the gospel. And this, this really blows my mind, and it should yours too. Because Jesus walks into our lives, and he sees our chair, right? Do this again. <laughs> Jesus walks into our lives and he sees our chair and he sees our sin and our shame and that ugliness and he, and he looks at it. He says, Okay. And he sits right down. But that's not all. Because then the guards put a bag over his head and they start punching him in the face and saying, Who's hitting you now? Prophesy, king of the Jews. And they take a scourge, which is like a cat of nine tails, with little metal hooks on the end that tear his flesh, and they beat him with that. And they take that shame and that sin, and they put it on his back. It's a cross. They put the cross on his back, and he has to walk through town with it, all the way through Jerusalem to the other side of town, till they get to Golgotha, outside of town the place of the skull. And he carries that heavy burden up the hill to go with them. And when they get there, they nail Jesus to the cross. And they raise it up. They raise up the cross and Jesus just hangs there. And he cries out, Eli, Eli! Lama Sabachthani! Which is Aramaic. And it means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he does. And the guy on the left, 
they break his legs. The guy on the right, they break his legs too. But Jesus, I'm pretty sure he's dead. So they take a spear, big spear, and they shove it up under his ribs, deep, right under here. Shove it deep, probably punches his heart. And when they pull it out, blood and water. Blood and water flows out. Jesus is dead. But that flow, that flow of blood covers over everything. That flow of love, of sacrificial love from the side of Jesus covers over our shame. It covers over our sin. <coughs> As far as the east is from the west, it is gone. Sin is forgiven. So Zacchaeus knows that Jesus is going to see his chair. So Zacchaeus makes sure he's the first one to get to the house, of course, right? And he walks into the house and he makes a beeline for the chair and he takes it over to the corner. And he stands here and he kind of uh, says, what chair? And he's sort of standing here whistling. Right? What chair? And everybody comes into the house. And Jesus comes in. And Peter comes in. The whole entourage, James and John and the Marys, all come into the house. And what do they see first? When they first walk in, they see that giant table with all the food on it. The bread and the figs and the wine, and it's a feast, and they're all gathered around. Hey, everybody, gather around. It's a banquet. And they're all gathered around, and, and Jesus, maybe because he's a carpenter, I don't know, but Jesus produces a chair out of nowhere and pushes it under the table and says, Peter, come on, i got a chair for you. I don't know. You know, it's Jesus. And he pulls out another chair out of nowhere. For James. And there's one for John. And there's one for all the Marys. And he produces all these chairs. And there's one for you. It's got your name on it. He produces a chair for you. And he says, Come on. Come and sit. It's a party. Come join me at the banquet. We're going to have a great time. You don't want to miss this. And everybody's around the table, and Peter's sort of been hanging out with Jesus because of their buds, right? Sees Zacchaeus standing. Well, maybe, maybe you've felt like this sometimes, but Zacchaeus is sort of standing over here, right? And the banquet's over there. The kingdom of God is feasting over at the table over there. And Zacchaeus is kind of like, oh, um, I'm not too sure about this. I don't know. You know? And Peter, Peter says, hey, everybody, prepare the way. Move down one. Make room for Zacchaeus. Oh. And Jesus, right? Jesus comes over, takes Zacchaeus' chair, and pushes it under the table. Says, Zacchaeus, come on. What are you waiting for? Come on over. I got a chair just for you, man. Come join us. Stop. Come on. Come on. Now, Zacchaeus, you know, over here. Zacchaeus just falls apart. No one has ever done this for Zacchaeus before. Ever. And he kind of, he goes over to the table where this great cloud of witnesses is having his banquet. He puts his hand on the chair and he looks at Jesus and he says, I am 
is so sorry. I pledge right here and now to give half of everything I own away to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, we know he's cheated a few people. Mm -hmm. I will pay them back four times what I took from them. And as he sits down, the entire table bursts into a thunderous applause. They are so happy. And Peter puts his arm around his knees. And James puts his arm around him. And Joanna comes over. Susanna comes over. And they put their hands on him and they pray over him. And Jesus comes over and lays his hand on Zacchaeus' shoulder. And he says, I tell you the truth. Today, salvation has come to this house. For this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to save and to seek what was lost. And Jesus goes over to the table. And he takes some bread. And he breaks it. This is my body, bro. <laughs> he passes it and goes over and he gets that goblet. Do you remember that goblet? Zacchaeus' great grandfather's goblet for Passover. And he fills it with wine. He says, This is my blood poured out for you. And he passes it around. And Zacchaeus gets the bread. He hadn't realized how hungry he really was. And the goblet comes to him. And he forgot all the excitement. How thirsty he had been. Thirsty for communion with God. <laughs> Aching for communion with the love that created this whole universe. It's here. Now. Ready to feast with us. That's the good news. That's the good news of the gospel. And this morning, I want to invite you to the table. Not to communion. But the big table. I keep wanting to say, <laughs> but I want to invite you to the big feast, the banquet, where everyone is gathered, right here in this sanctuary, because there's a chair here with your name on it, and Jesus himself is holding it out for you, come on. Join me at the banquet. We're going to have a great time. It's like an invitation. You don't have to accept. You don't have to sit there if you don't want to. But it's there. The gift is there. And Jesus is holding it out for you. Come on. All you have to do is say, yeah. I'll sit there. Now here's the coolest thing. If Jesus is today, and Jesus is yesterday, and Jesus is forever, that means that where Jesus goes, so does that table. Which means, and I love this, if Jesus is in this room, where two or three or more are gathered together in my name, if Jesus is in this room, so is the table. So is the banquet right here in this sanctuary. There's a chair in the kingdom of God, not just after you die, but right now, right here, today. And all you have to do is say, okay, I'll sit there. Chill with your name on it. To be a part of the love of God.
that is here and now. And we're going to move right on into the closing hymn as part of this. And it's called Sanctuary. It's number 2164 in the Little Book. And they're going to play it through once for us so we get the tune. Many of you will know this. Then we're going to sing it through once. Then we're going to shut up and pray quietly. And they're going to play it through twice more while we are reflectively thinking about our life and whether the way we live our lives creates wholeness or brokenness in the lives of others. <laughs> we can think reflectively on the invitation. Remember that Jesus is holding that chair out for you. And if you don't sit there today, he'll pull it out again for you tomorrow. Go into peace that surpasses all understanding in the name of Jesus Christ.